Hello guys, this is Pandamers36, and today's video is going to be a little discussion about how I personally mix my camouflage colors for tanks. I just finished painting up these two stokes here, and I kind of thought, hey, I could actually make a video just explaining how I uh, do all this, because I never show myself airbrushing because I suck at it, and my airbrushing setup is terrible and in my garage, so I'm not going to bring all my camera and lighting down there, so yeah, I never really showed it, I just kind of say, like, I'd paint this, this color and this color. So I'm actually going to go over right now just how I mix these colors. As you can see, uh, the tanks here are not the same base color. I've actually used different colors of um, paint, but overall, I only really use these uh, six colors of paint here to make camouflage. So in this hobby, uh, we only ever really use, depending, like, it doesn't matter what nation your tank's from, the only colors you're really commonly using are yellow, like a this kind of yellow color. You'll have a green. Uh, maybe that could be your base color for your American or Soviet tank or on a German tank of camouflage and then either red or brown as usually a camouflage color uh, So first of all for the base yellow color on these tanks here, Dunkel Gulp I usually use these three colors here. We've got XF60 Which is dark yellow, which I think that's literally what Dunkel Gulp means in German But it's kind of a you know, it's not the right color. It's too dark It's definitely not the color you see on a German tank. So I usually add some XF4 to it, which as you can see is much more yellow, but it's too intense on its own. So when you mix these together, you do get actually exactly what the color that the Stug 4 is over here. I think I might have added a little bit of white to it this time, but as you can see, it's just kind of a standard yellow color. The Stug 3 over here is, as you can see, a lighter color. That's because I added some, or at least more, XF2 flat white to it. Just, you know, white makes it lighter. But usually it's about a 50-50 mix of these two colors. Some people use, uh, like, they use a de like XF55 deck tan instead of this, and they don't add the yellow, or I mean, I mean the uh, the white to it. And there's also XF57 bu uh, buff from Tamiya, and they're all pretty similar, but these two colors, usually lightened with a little bit of this XF2, is usually what I use for my double gel. Now for the green camouflage color, I have uh, this color here from Tamiya, which is uh, JA Green, I'm pretty sure it's Japanese Army Green, as you can see it's kind of a dark green color. And then I have this one here called Cockpit Green XF71. Uh, I, there's also Tamiya's NATO Green, which is actually a pretty nice color on its own, but I usually end up using these two colors because of what I have on hand right now. So they're both not the right color, this one's too light, this one's too dark. But if you mix them together, about 50-50 again, you get a very nice camouflage color, which is what I have on both of these tanks, actually. I mean, it might look a little different because the base color is different on them, but it's actually the exact same color on both tanks. It's the green. You'll be able to see there. I think it's a really nice olive green color. If you're going to do a... Uh, actually, I have seen some Soviet tanks that are kind of like... This is a little more blue, I'd say, than just a green, you know, if you look at it. But I've seen some Soviet tanks are almost like a bluish green. It's pretty cool. Uh, that's kind of what I did on my uh, on the T34, the model 1941 I did a while ago. And as always, um, you can add a little bit of white to it if you want to lighten it up. Um, and now for browns and reds, I do something a little interesting here, which is I have this color here, which is Tamiya's NATO Brown, and it's definitely not brown. If you look at it, it's basically a primer red. Now, this color on its own is pretty intense. It's brighter than I think a, a, a red, a German red brown color should be. And to actually tone it down, like what I've done on the uh, Stug 4 over here, because if you look at it, I'll move the Stug out of the way. It's definitely more brown than this is. So what I actually do is I add, uh, I think I added uh, actually both of these colors to it. Now that might seem weird, I'm adding green to a red to make a brown. But if you actually add the complementary color uh, to another color, that means like on the color wheel the opposite. So if you add a, a green to a red or vice versa, a blue to an orange or a yellow to a purple, it actually makes the color less intense and it will make it more brown. Kind of, or I guess kind of brownish gray. It'll tone it down. So I added, I think it was pretty sure it was both of these greens to this color here. Obviously I'm using less green than I am brown, red-brown. 
and then I end up with this kind of toned down grayish brown color and I'm really happy with that color actually. And I do the same thing over here on these tracks for the Stug 3. I added more green this time, uh, like more green, there was still obviously less green than there was red brown and it's, it's just a little more brown than the, uh, the color in here. This one is still a little red because obviously I use a red brown color but yes. And that's essentially how, uh, it's a pretty basic rundown of how I paint my tanks here. Uh, yeah, a little bit of color theory there on the uh, complementary color setup, but yeah. Of course, there's always those uh, paints like AK Attractive, Mig Ammo, and Vallejo that have like a lot more specific colors. I only have about 20 colors of Tamiya paint, actually. And these six are really the only ones I use for camouflage. I also have uh, like browns and grays and stuff like that, obviously, but you know, I have essentially a yellow, a red, and a green here, then I've got a white, a beige, and then the light green. That's really all I ever use for any of my tanks. And I just can kind of add a little more white, or maybe a little more of the darker color if I want to make the red brown a little more brown, to add more green. If I want to make it a little more red, I will add less green. And you can just kind of fiddle with it there. Same thing with the, uh, the base color of Duckle Gale. Same paints here, just added more white to get this kind of more light color and this kind of stark yellow yeah, camouflage on the Stug 4 there. Yep, so um, hope this little quick video, kind of informal, I was just talking about stuff, but I figured, you know, it'd be fun to make something like this, yeah. So I hope it helps you guys out uh, and any questions you have. I really recommend airbrushing Tamiya paints, actually. I'm not saying that the paints are bad, but I just have... Sometimes I do have issues with them. It's probably my airbrush. It's a little fiddly, and I have to have the paint really consistent. Um, well, at least consistently thinned. But with Tamiya paints, like these ones here, when I airbrush them, I almost never have issues. And also, I would, if you're going to airbrush Tamiya paints, I would recommend you actually use Tamiya's lacquer thinner rather than their X20A. Because not only does it smell a lot better... <laughs> I'm joking there, it smells awful. But this paint thins it much better, makes it just smoother and... The airbrush is nicer. Of course, when you have lacquer paint in there, you, if you don't have your uh, like uh, base coat or anything like that properly sealed, or if it's you know, if kind of like painting on lacquer with a brush, you can actually kind of rip up the the base color. But yes, Tamiya paints are I find are really good to airbrush, and though they don't have as many specified colors, like I mean specific colors, you can mix their paints really easily, and. You know, their paints aren't pre-thin very much, so you get a lot more in the jar than you do uh, with those specific pre-thin paints, though you'd have to buy like four or five Tammy paints sometimes to mix them to get the right color you want. But yeah, so when I'm not airbrushing those AK paints, I'm using these Tammy ones, and I am really pleased with how Tammy airbrushes. So yes, hope this video helps you guys out, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. This is PanzerMark36, and I guess I'll have some weathering videos coming up on these two tanks pretty soon. So as always, thanks for watching, and goodbye.